Today we're going to do my playoff pickems and break down some of these very important games. Let's start with EMEA and we'll take a look at our first game here, which is Team Heretics versus Navi. Now it'd be very easy, I think, to look at the game Team Heretics versus Navi and just think, oh well, Navi are obviously going to win that game. And if you haven't been watching EMEA, that's probably what you think. But actually, Team Heretics, I think, have a legitimate shot of winning this game. And let me try and sell you on Team Heretics here. So Team Heretics have played two games thus far against Foot and Calming Core. And given the way that everything is shaken out and the fact that Calming Core were the team that came through the play-ins as well, I think it's fairly agreed upon that Group A, Team Heretics group, probably was the hardest group in EMEA. And that Foot, in reality, aren't that bad. They just happen to have played against a pretty good group overall. And Team Heretics came out the winners of that group. And not only did they come out the winners of that group, but for instance, in that game versus Kami Core, they won 13-4, 13-4. And just a reminder, Kami Core are in the playoffs. They are the fourth team that made the playoffs. And Team Heretics destroyed them. So really, when you're looking at it in terms of that kind of view, Team Heretics are a team that hasn't dropped a map. And yeah, sure, the names you might not be super familiar with, and you might be looking at this team that was pretty awful last year and think there's no way that this team can beat the likes of Navi. But when you actually look at how they've played, they've played at a level that is a Madrid level team where they have been beating down on other good teams and not even losing a map to other teams that probably had aspirations of going to Madrid. And if you look at the highest rated players on VLR right now, the top rated players across all the kickoffs are Boo. And then his brother, Mini Boo. And another thing that they might have going for them is that Team Heretics are playing some weird comps. They're playing a Neon Gecko on Lotus. They're playing a No Raise Bind with a Silver, a Yoru, Ko, Astra. A very, very weird comp there as well. So who knows what they've got cooked up on some of these maps that we haven't seen from them yet. On the other side of the coin, though, you've got Navi. And weirdly enough, you might say that Navi actually had the easiest group given the way that Team Liquid uh, looked in that game. And they also lost a map to BBL. So you might be coming away from Navi's performance and thinking... Hmm, I have Navi actually been that good, but for me, other than that map of Bind that they lost to BBL, Navi have looked very good. In fact, I think they've looked like one of the best teams across all of the regions, to be honest. Particularly Ardis on Yoru on Breeze. He is absolutely frying right now on that map playing Yoru, which is funny because Ardis, I'm pretty sure, said he doesn't like playing Yoru and would, didn't want to play it, you know, back when he was on uh, FBX before. So that is quite funny that he seems to have come around and now is absolutely destroying everyone on that agent. And of course, Navi, you would think, are going to be able to go head-to-head -head with Heretics, right? Heretics have been winning a lot of kind of 50-50 fights in their games with Boo, Mini Boo, Benji Fishy as well has been kind of frying. But once you, you know, kind of get to Navi levels of players, you know, are you going to win, you know, your 50-50s that consistently against, you know, your artists and your Shao and Sagetsu and Zipan? you know, maybe not as much. So Navi will definitely still be coming in as favorites for this game. And I do think that they have looked very good. And, you know, as I've kind of mentioned before, they've been cooking a bit as well with some of this Yoru stuff on Breeze. You know, it can be very difficult to handle. So this is probably a closer game than you perhaps realize, but I do still think Navi will probably just have the experience. You know, this will be the biggest game a lot of the Team Heretics players will have played. So I will go for Navi. And then our other game is Fnatic versus Calming Core. And this is a tale of two completely different experiences of getting to this stage because Fnatic have played two maps in this entire tournament. And one of them was very close against Team Vitality and Boss actually came away from Lotus in the post-match interview saying that they needed to actually work on their Lotus defense side. He had a suspicion that something, you know, was probably up and they needed to change some things up uh, on that side of the map. But then they came on to Ascent versus Vitality, a map that actually historically Fnatic haven't been that great at and absolutely kind of rolled them. In particular, Alfio was just in a world where he could just not get a 2 or 3k. He was just... He was just insane on that map. Everything he did seemed to work, and it was kind of, you know, a return to normalcy of a very convincing 13-5 win over Vitality on Ascent. So, of course, with Fnatic, we kind of know what to expect. They are Fnatic. They still have incredible individual skill, and it looks like they haven't really reinvented the wheel when in EMEA we have seen a lot of teams changing up comps and adapting to the meta somewhat. It does look like Fnatic are kind of, at least, obviously, we've only seen two maps, but at least so far have been kind of playing it pretty safe and standard. But... They keep teasing that they're going to play Yoru at some point, so who knows, maybe they will have something cooked up. But Calming Core's story is one completely different to Fnatic's, because they played five whole games and 12 maps versus Fnatic's two. So there's a lot of tape 
uh, of Kami Core in general, and they've already played four games of Sunset, which seems to be a bit of a home map for a Kami Core. But when we look at this game, Fnatic banned Sunset in their one game versus Vitality, so we might not actually get to see uh, Kami Core, you know, kind of have that advantage on what has kind of become a home map for them. But I think when we look at Kami Core's story in general, they've had some absolutely outstanding maps, like, you know, Cooking Up Koi 13 4 on Sunset. They destroyed Giants 13 4 on Lotus as well. But they've also had some rough maps as well. As I mentioned, they kind of got destroyed by Team Heretics 13 4 on both maps. Uh, they also lost a foot uh, on Bind 13 4 as well. So. There's definitely seems to be maybe a little bit of inconsistency still with Kami Core, kind of maybe what you would expect from, you know, a young team who's, you know, maybe still learning, can have some, you know, rough maps and, and have some good ones as well. So there's definitely still some up and down moments with them, but I think obviously the extra experience they will have gained from all of this will serve them well long term. But the question is, can they actually beat Fnatic? And I think obviously, in reality, the answer is probably no. You know, Fnatic are going to have better players. They have a lot more VODs to study and figure out what Calming Core are going to do. Calming Core are playing some weird comps as well that maybe Fnatic can anti-strat in ways that Calming Core will have never seen before either. And Fnatic have shown nothing, so there isn't really much for Calming Core to anti-strat on the other side. So it's definitely going to be an uphill battle for Calming Core, and so I'm not going to surprise anyone here. I'm going to pick Fnatic to beat Kami Core. And then in the grand final, though, we would get, you know, the, the, the kind of classico here of Fnatic Navi in recent times in EMEA. And again, I don't think this would be a 3-0. I would be shocked if Navi uh, didn't win a map. But I do think that Fnatic still probably would have the overall quality. But I really think that this could go, like, the distance. But I have to stick with Fnatic until I'm kind of proven otherwise. Moving on to Americas, though, and we have these games, EG versus Loud and NRG versus Sentinels. Let's start with EG versus Loud, and EG is the story similar to Fnatic. They've only played two maps, two very close maps against G2, 15-13 and 13-11. And hey, the expectations for EG were not that high, right? I don't think anyone expected really anything from this squad that have of course, has kind of been cobbled together, um, but they managed to beat G2. And I think that perhaps raised some eyebrows and made people think like, oh, okay, so EG, you know, they'll probably be okay. You know, a lot of people maybe thought they were going to be really bad, but more likely they're going to be, you know, in that kind of middle of the pack and that might be okay for them. But the thing is, they are playing against Loud. Now, of course, the advantage EG have had is they haven't shown very much, right? They only have played two maps, and so that's kind of good for them. And there's more tape of Loud for them to study, and they've had a longer break than every other team as well uh, in between their games. So there is some things going for EG in general, and Potter has been cooking, as we saw on Icebox, with the Deadlock pick, uh, the Gecko KO as well, right? So perhaps they could surprise Loud with some interesting team comps and whatever, but the problem for them is they might get surprised by Loud as well. And Loud have been cooking. I mean, that's been the story of Loud in this tournament, pretty much, playing some bizarre comps. They seem very into Phoenix all of a sudden. They seem, you know, to love this Viper Breach that they've played on every map thus far they've played, which is kind of a weird combo we haven't really seen a lot of, but Loud are leaning into it heavily, and so far it's worked pretty decently for them. And that's been the story of Loud. And of course, in my mind, my first thought with this is, there's no way that Loud have survived the group of death and come ahead of that group out in first place to then lose to EG. There's just no way that that's going to happen, right? And I think for EG, this is the worst draw they could have got, right? I think had they got Sentinels, I actually might have thought like, oh, okay, they could, you know, hard empty strat Sentinels. There's a lot of footage out there of Sentinels, right? Like, you know, maybe there's a world for EG, but... There's no way against Loud, right? The, with the experience of Loud, of course, for EG, for a lot of their players, it's, you know, probably going to be the biggest game of their Valorant careers thus far, you know, other than Jorgamo and Potter. Uh, you know, so it's a high-pressure environment for them. But for Loud, you just trust. We've been here before. We've played in much bigger games than this for the majority of the team. You know, we feel fine. We'll win, right? And that's how I think Loud go into every game, to be honest, feeling like. And... I don't see the way that EG can win. I don't, I don't, I can't see the vision of like, oh, they did this thing and that helped them win. I just don't see it. Again, against Sentinels or maybe even NRG, there's, there was paths there for EG. But against Loud, I just don't see it. So it's no surprise then that I'm going to be picking Loud. But for Sentinels, I think, of course, they have played a lot of maps. I'm not too bothered by the losing to G2 on two maps that didn't really matter. You know, I'm more concerned with the rest of their run. And they have played, again, a lot of games, a lot of maps in general. They had to survive 
kind of uh, some of these maps. And I think it's been a bit up and down, right? They had maps like Breeze versus Leviathan that I don't think they looked that great on. You know, Bind versus 100 Thieves maybe was, you know, they seem to get pretty drastically outplayed on that one as well. But there have been other maps where they've kind of been, you know, in the absolute ascendancy, like Split against Leviathan. They 13-3'd them, right? Against, against MIBR, I thought they looked really good for, you know, the majority of that game in general. So... There's definitely been times that Sentinels have looked really good. There may be other times, though, where they have looked a little shaky and there might be gaps in their map pool and whatever. And, of course, they have a lot of footage for NRG to study and anti-strat what they're doing across a range of maps. When we look at NRG, though, and their run at this tournament, it's kind of the exact opposite to Sentinels, who have had an absolute gauntlet and running through, you know, the group of death and all of that and scraping through the play-ins and all of that, like... NLG have arguably had, you know, the easiest group to play in. They've played against Fury and Cloud9, which knowing what we do now, I don't think anyone is rating those teams too highly in general. And yeah, they won those games against teams that they have much better players than, right? And I think that that's pretty much NLG's story in this tournament. It's been a bit of a breeze up to this point. But the thing is, even in those games, you know, we're playing, you know, still some close maps, a 14-2 against Cloud9, a 13-10 against Furia on Breeze as well. And, you know, when you do look at some of those games, like, yes, I do still think you can see the quality of the individual players. Demon 1 is still, you know, hitting some incredible shots. Ethan is still, you know, using utility in incredible ways and setting up his teammates incredibly as well. So there definitely is still that quality there from NRG. But I'm also looking at some rounds that they have and some halves of maps, maybe, like their attack side on Breeze against Furia. I'm thinking, this doesn't look that good. Like, yeah, the players, the names are good and the players are good and they're hitting some shots, but their actual, like, overall strategy, maybe, or their coordination, you know, is lacking maybe a bit. And I do, I'm very interested to see this because I do think that obviously NRG are a very, very strong team, but it wouldn't surprise me if there are some gaps there. And I would be surprised if this is 2-0. I think we're almost certainly going to get map 3. With all of that said, I do think that the one thing that will perhaps swing this game is the fact that NRG haven't had to show a ton, whereas Sentinels have had to play an absolute gauntlet of maps. And I do think that that extra bit of prep that NRG can have will probably give them the advantage overall and the extra rest and all of that over Sentinels. So I will be going for NRG in this game. There is a part of me that does think that Sentinels can do this and this will be extremely close and like go to overtime map three at least that's what I'm hoping of course because that would be absolute content uh but yeah I am gonna slightly go NRG and I think the difference will be the kind of extra prep time and extra stuff that Sentinels have had to show and in the grand final though I've been on loud since day one you know I put loud at the top of my power rankings I said I trust in Sadak and so there's just no way that I'm going with anything else other than loud because I just trust in Sadak.